Okay. So when I did this face, um, anatomy and stuff aside, because the problem with stylization is that uh, if you're if you're aiming for appeal, like you want something to feel appealing, then with handsome male or female faces, or, or pretty female faces, handsome uh, male faces, I guess is how you generally describe them. Uh, there's a bunch of things which are sort of separate to shape design, separate to the abstract shape design that makes them look appealing. And it's essentially just the elements that are realistic, um, but realistic of a handsome man, like a real handsome man. Um, so those in this case um, are probably going to be that he has a fairly high bridge that's often, at least for this sort of like more Western looking face, that's a nice appealing thing that people like. He's got a well trimmed beard, um, sort of small eyes with like a nice chunky brow line that's it's not heavy, it doesn't like fold into his eyes, but um, it looks very strong, it's got a nice chiseled um, shape to it. And a lot of these things are then um, elements you can take and stylize to uh, emphasize. But on their own, they're things that don't necessarily fit um, like uh, shape design, like big, medium, small or something. Um, imagine you took the sort of golden ratio or something to a face like this. Um, a realistic face probably has the eyes sort of somewhere in the middle of the skull. And there's not much golden ratio about half-half. But because that's what humans' faces look like, it's like we are more concerned with the proportions um, as they are compared to real proportions. Um, rather than um, purely um, ideal, like abstract ideal proportions. Um, however, when you take a face like this, you can start trying to push push for sort of these idealistic proportions. Um, well, you know, you, what I've done with this guy, he's got a slightly longer gap here. Um, and this is probably one of the most basic um, elements of making something appealing, it's just adding contrast. So these two different distances are slightly different from each other, that's contrast. Um, and in this case, it sort of, it emphasizes the length of his nose, which is a nice, like sort of uh, handsome trait, which I think uh, you could see in a lot of male faces. This long, um, long and pointed shape here, I think is common to most um, handsome male faces from the West. And then, uh, this music is actually distracting me slightly, so I'm going to turn it down more. Um, so that's, a t that's like an example of a place where I've changed proportions from reality, not much, um, just a little bit, um, to push it in the direction of abstract appeal. In fact, I'll write this up here, so I'll just go for realism versus abstract appeal. Um, so moving on from that, the sort of more subtle design in here, um, my general sort of style, and this is the problem where if I teach about what's appealing, then it's going to be what's appealing to me and what I try to put in my work to make it appealing. And certainly in this sketch, a lot of that is adding some sort of flow to my line. So um, you see a lot of people, they might go for simplifying shapes into like uh, straight lines. And that's another approach which I sometimes enjoy, but I'm certainly at the moment uh, more of a fan of this sort of like these smooth um, accelerating lines that can often have sharp points between them, but they sort of they give a direction um, and they lead the eye around a lot more effectively than I think um, straight lines do because whenever these meet, a straight line meets another straight line. Um, it's kind of like random whether you choose to go left or right with it, but um, if you've got a line that's doing this before it meets, you've already got a bit of direction telling you where you should go next. So even though this corner isn't a continuation of that um, smooth line, you now have like a bias of where you should look next. An example of that in this face, which Again, is sort of uh, maybe realistic. Um, most of the time, your nose does have this little curve coming down into the cupid's bow, but 
I have chosen to pronounce that and make sure that instead of the nose coming in at this angle and stopping like that, which to me would sort of make your eye shoot this way, um, because if you come down the, uh, the nose like this, and then you come in immediately, then your eyes wanted to go this way, unless there's something else which causes it to change direction. But I like reading the face from the eye down to the chin and then back up, because I think that sort of takes you on a journey um, all the way from the eyes round the chin to the nose uh, to the ear and then maybe back into the face again. So in this case, what I've done is I've made sure that there's um, this little little curve coming out of the nose. Um, and then yeah, so the beard, again, this is based in exactly how beards do grow, like on a lip like this. The hairs will poke out like this and, and drop down slightly because of gravity. Um, that's just how they grow. There's also probably a bit more of a direction just based on how the um, hair leaves the surface of the skin. Um, but, you know, say in the reference, his hairs may have actually been like this and he's just trimmed this shape into it. Well, I've chosen instead to show that these lines curve down like that. So in this case, if you did take a cross section of uh, this part of his face, you have his lip. Um, and essentially, in my version, the, the hairs on the top are far longer than the ones underneath because they all do this. I just want, I'm concerned with the outside hair because this is where I can put this nice curve that takes you from the top of the lip down to the bottom and then shoots the eye off, eye off in this direction. Um, rather than the alternative, which might be like this, which could be far more realistic in terms of how he's actually trimmed his beard. But here I'm, I'm feeling like this line could just sort of tell the eye to just leave the face, go off in a different direction. Um, and seeing is in every other part of uh, the design here, I've like, I've aimed to keep the eye coming back in towards the face, like on the tip of the nose, instead of having it sharp. Um, which is another way you could stylize it, and it's appealing in its own way, but not in the way that I want. Um, I've got a curve coming away from it, so it still feels nice and pointy, but um, it doesn't shoot the eye off. Um, so that's that's kind of like how I've approached uh, the lines in, in the face. Um, I'm also mixing in bits where you know I've, I've done a lost edge for his lip here because it's a very bright area of the face. And it's just a nice, a nice thing to do. Um, but because the last, the last thing the eye was following when it was coming down the contour of the face was um, his beard here, this actually does cut off uh, fairly sharply. But it's already pointing down towards the chin. So you kind of like imagine you're a little person running along this landscape. Um, you get to this point, and then you do a little leap, a little jump, a little leap of faith, and you're back onto the. Um, the shadow underneath. And you'll see that this shadow, uh, again, partly because of this is how the form wraps around the face, but I've got it starting really thin and then growing in width. So it really feels like an entrance point, um, an alternative. Like if I did this, again, it's sort of, it's a battle between what is actually real and what I'm start choosing to stylize. But in this case, I could have stylized it like this. Like um, maybe this whole lip was bright, uh, bright and light. And so I'm just showing how his beard pokes out underneath. And considering where the beard hair would actually grow um, in this sort of shape beneath the, beneath the lips, um, it will probably be just be, be doing this. So it's going to start at the skin and come out rather than filling up this gap. But I wanted to fill up that gap. Um, so this is, again, an active choice that I'm making to ensure that the eye comes off this moustache and goes back into the where I want, the, I want you to pay attention to. So then, yeah, flows around, uh, things like the chin. Um, again, all the lines here are somewhat curved um, because otherwise uh, you, you might lose the attention going off. But there's more to the chin than meets the eye. Um, this is a place where I can be a bit more abstract with my shape design. Um, it's no longer... Like, it doesn't have to be as anatomically correct because I can choose to make the beard as thick or as thin as I like. Um, and any of it's really kind of, it's plausible. Um, it's not gonna throw the audience off. They're not gonna see that chin and go, oh, beards don't grow like that because they can. You can stylize it uh, in real life. You can style your beard however you like. 
So here I get the chance to do some nice um, proportional design. Um, so actually this, this length and this length, they feel pretty similar, but for this shape, like off the, the drawing chin, I have like a, a small line, a medium line, and then a big line coming in to the neck. Um, and like even here, even though this is technically where it then joins, this is still a longer line than this one. And so this is just a very simple application of big, medium, small. Um, the alternative could have been like if I was making his beard more pointy, like if I did this sort of thing um, and made these two lengths the same, just find it less appealing. I and mean, obviously here it's, and now looks a bit weird because it's poking out of its chin too much. But um, to me, it's it becomes distracting because uh, to some extent, the eye now sees these two relationships as, as joined. And so I kind of, I start to see like a, almost like a square plane or something on the edge of his face. It still, it still works fairly well because um, there's multiple levels of shape or uh, sort of stylization going on there. Um, and simply by abstracting a, a chin, which is realistically going to be more like this, where it's just hair poking out in a sort of circle. Um, a gentle curve. Um, anything that's going to like cut that and turn it into something more um, geometric is going to be cool uh, to some extent. But you can push it further and think about the length of each of those those sides. So then, yeah, it comes into the neck, uh, goes back up. Um, there's actually this nice. Uh, I don't think I showed it too much in the sketch, but if I was to start painting this, I think I would really lean into it where we're doing big, medium, small, but instead of with lines, we're doing it with um, whole areas of value. So now we have this chunk, um, this slightly larger chunk, and then this big chunk. Um, and it's, you know, they're just getting slightly bigger each time as they move from the chin uh, to the back of the jaw. So, so just a nice little uh, area of shape contrast. Whereas I guess I can try and show you what the opposite would be. Um, like, um, so one thing would be, imagine that I had the same width of um, hair all along, all the way along. Uh, I suppose it starts to look like it's a very curated and trimmed beard. But beard. Um, so the problem is, if you look at this and think about how it was, how it would look in real life, then you might think, okay, that's actually kind of a cool trimmed style. But um, to me, it's just not as appealing. Um, when it's flattened onto a canvas. So um, yeah, in this case, I prefer this. It also suits his slightly rugged look. Um, so all of these sort of proportional things, this is essentially what I'm thinking about and also to some extent just doing automatically when I'm um, making these faces look more ideal um, and more appealing. And that's just one way you could do it. So the my thoughts are if you instead liked the sort of sharp, sharp um, featured look, then you could very much go in for um, pointy edges everywhere. And I don't think this is, this isn't wrong at all. And I have done it as well. Like the um, Cormorant Fisherman, I was going for much sharper shapes. It's totally another, it's a totally different way of stylizing things. Um, but if you, I think a lot of the time it's like a balance. So if you're going to focus on sharp edges, sharp straight lines, then I think it then becomes far more important that you're paying attention to the, the length of those lines in relation to each other. Because you don't want consistency. Because um, if you start having like a nose shapes that kind of have the same length side each time, you just get like interesting. So you could start getting almost like standard polygon shapes uh, to start looking like a hexagon or something on the edge of his nose. Which, because we understand those shapes as um, 2D objects, it's going to detract from the illusion that this is a 3D object. Um, but there's a bunch of things you can do with this sort of sharper look, and I think it's very cool. It's just not what I've been doing. It's not what naturally comes to me. to continue that. Like these are sort of the areas I would 
cut it up into. You can see this eyebrow is quite nice because it's like the same shape mirrored along this line and uh, one small, one big. Um, I could even then continue that little shape relationship and make this um, this like little shadow shape above his eyebrow um, a medium of the same shape but rotated. Um, yeah, this cheekbone here, this would have to be sharpened out. All of this stuff here, instead of going for like a, a curve coming around like this, either I choose to really push the stylization and have a have a completely spiky jaw, or I would have to do a, a sort of in-between where I um, maybe cut it off at this sort of angle. And this is this is where you're sort of choosing how realistic or how not, um, or how far you want to move away from the reference you've got. Um, I, I think for this guy, I like the extreme, the extreme one where the, the jaw comes all the way back. And again, because he's got beard on it, the jaw could actually have stopped inside and I think you imply that it has. And this is just the way he's cut his beard. So it's a great place to uh, push the stylization because it's not going to make the piece too unbelievable. But yeah, the beard here, oh, so the moustache here, you could like really flick out. And I don't think this is necessarily making the eye fly off here, but um, I no longer really feel a flow coming down his face like this. Um, instead, I kind of stop to appreciate each shape a lot more, which essentially it's kind of changing just how you experience the image. And so the sort of stop and start um, of this sort of uh, shape design maybe sort of matches the slightly more severe personality or feeling you want to give this character. Um, villains, for example, they always have triangles in them because triangles are spiky and look dangerous. Like, I think this guy looks far more friendly than this guy. Um, like, I've actually removed some of the shadow underneath his eyebrow, but he's still got this, like, darker look somehow. Um, so yeah, let's just like finish this character off, I'm giving them spikes everywhere. Um, something I hadn't mentioned before, which I was going to, is yeah, I wanted this guy to have a pointy chin um, without it actually being really fine and pointy. And the thing that I changed from the original was instead of the beard, or instead of the bottom of the chin, uh, curving around like this naturally. Um, I put a little inverse curve, so a curve that's going in the opposite direction. A fairly subtle one. Um, and these two lines kind of, they imply that these two are converging to a single point. Like this really sort of long spike coming out from the face. Um, so it just makes this, despite being quite a large chunk on the end of his face, um, it makes it feel pointier than it would otherwise, because without it, um, if it was more like this, you don't really get that thin pointy feeling. Um, and yeah, the further away you go from that, the, the less and less it feels like that. So yeah, this little reverse shape here is a very nice one to, to emphasize without changing drastically the silhouette. Ears, let's see what I can do with this ear, just make that. Spiky, I guess. Um, yeah, actually, this is this is an interesting shape right here. Um, this, to me, at the moment, doesn't feel appealing. I don't like the fact that I've got the same size uh, flick on both sides at the same level. There's something that just <laughs> it triggers me in a sense. Um, it's a pattern that I don't want you to see. Like, I don't think there's any value in seeing that this little shape is repeated twice. Um, on the eyebrow, which is far more important to the face, that's cool. I think that's like if your eye gets distracted and stays there for a while, that's a good thing because this is where you want them to look to read the emotion of the character. But this doesn't give any emotion to the character. Um, so I think, if anything, I, if I had to make a choice, I would want 
this bit here maybe to be one of the few sort of curves in his design so that your eye either flows up to the top and then comes back round um, across his forehead or if you follow this side of the um, the hair up this is where you can have um, a little cliff edge I'm gonna call them cliff edges where you have like a sharp um, corner of a shape it's like a cliff edge where you have to um, jump off it or like if you're going along it too fast then you can't slow down and, and climb down you just fall off the edge so imagine the eye is coming off the chin up round and it comes up here then this can just throw them back into the middle of the face um, you could even cut it off lower and it would make even more sense so it's like a, it's a jumping off point to get back into the action um, but the viewer, I guess, at that point sort of chooses whether they they want to see the face again or whether they want to pay attention to the back of the head. Um, anyway, let's make his chin pointed like I would for this style. Um, this whole little bit here can probably just be turned into a big triangle. Um, and the same with the thing under his lip. So yeah, this this will be like the opposite of what I did on the other side. He has his top lip. I can show his bottom lip like this. And then I can show the shadow of his bottom lip. Um, and then his chin poking straight out from underneath. Um, rather than putting any sort of curve that joins the two. Um, because the eye is like jumping off all of these little cliff edges. Um, I'm no longer concerned about there being like an obvious way to get, get back in. So still going for that lost edge because it looks cool. Um, this is how I might stylize the lip instead. Um, this stuff up here, this can be anything really. It doesn't matter too much. Um, although actually, let's, let's quickly do this. Let's make some like shapes here. Um, so this... This sort of feels like, oh yeah, I'm putting lots of these spiky shapes in, that's fitting the shape language to me. Um, as soon as I did this shape here, it felt like too much. It felt like I had too much noise um, going on that doesn't really mean anything. And um, in this case, I think I would explain that by, um, these feel like arrows that are pointing in this direction. And they're doing it in a very strong, strong way. So like, there's a bunch of interest that sort of makes your eye go back and forth here and there's nothing around it, nothing to look at. Um, so a better place for that kind of design or that sort of intensity of uh, shape would be here. Like if I just turn that round, this makes a bit more sense because now it's pointing back towards the interesting points. Um, but also if I just imagine that this, this is a line that exists within the face now, um, there's not much variation across that line. So uh, if I, actually I'm gonna do this for the entire face here. So, um, and actually I'll compare it to the outline of his face like this, because I think the outline of his face is far more interesting. Even though I'm not sure if it really holds up either. But yeah, so again, trying to avoid the fact that uh, the one on the right, if you actually sort of looked at it for a while, you may realize is a face. Um, and of course, realizing something is a face and seeing uh, real elements in it is going to make you go, ah, oh, that's cool, um, because it's something you recognize. But at a very abstract level, um, they're, they're quite similar in terms of their layout of um, big, medium, and small, and that kind of thing. What I'd criticize both of them for is um, even though we have a, a range of sizes, so like, you know, this might be a big line, this might be a small line, this might be a medium one. Um, and I have yet to come up with a good way to explain this idea, but what I like to do is put contrast, levels of contrast within levels of contrast. So 
There's a big, medium, small relationship here. And to me, ideally, the next big, medium, small relationship would itself be like its own little chunk. So let's do this one here. Um, medium, two smalls and a big-ish, I'm not sure, whatever. Um, here's a little big, medium, small co um, contrast and here's a big, medium, small shape contrast. But if you look at these two next to each other, they're the same. They're the same rough size, they take up the same size on the page. Um, and to me, the more appealing thing would be to try and apply big, medium, small to that area. So make this a whole bunch bigger. This is big, this is medium, and then this last chunk at the top, this can be the small. Um, and now this line to me feels far more interesting. Um, there's like a, a flow of um, detail density, there's a flow of interest. It goes from like really tight and fiddly up to very big and somewhat expressive. Um, and the same I would apply to uh, all these curves and stuff as well. Like when you have sort of small curves coming back and forth and then they start getting bigger and bigger. Like this is an appealing uh, like shape contrast to me. Whereas the opposite where if I essentially made all of these relationships sort of the same size. Um, try and fix the line weight so that it's less um, distracting. Um, if these are kind of now looking like they're the same sort of size of big, medium, small, this is a much less appealing line. Um, it's stylized and so there's interest in that stylization, but compared to this one, there's no overall contrast from one end to the other. It doesn't feel like you've got anywhere. So if your eye goes across this line, it's the same amount of detail, the same amount of back and forth. And so it's not as interesting. So if you can get contrast within your contrast, then uh, you're getting that much more interest into your, into your work. So um, applying that rule to um, this face again, if you look at like the shape of all of these, these are like little triangle chunks. There's also little triangle chunks down here. There's also little triangle chunks down here. And um, like these are all the same size of uh, shape detail, almost to me. Um, what I like about other areas of the face is that if I took those out, um, that these chunks here, um, in comparison, this is where we have a big, medium, and then I guess if I was going to be uh, picky like a, or sort of really detailed with it, because the eye has the, um, the focal point, Inside here, we have the smallest shapes. So if I move this off to the side, this is our shape layout. We've got um, areas of shapes, which each themselves are quite interesting. But there's the small, the medium, and the big um, across the entire face. And that's what makes it appealing to me, because you've got contrast within contrast. So let's continue and let's just tidy up the bits that I would say I don't like as much. Um, I think at this point it's now nice to have the forehead almost like completely clean because um, at least compared to, to here, you want some larger shapes because all of this feels a bit messy like even this line I think I would say isn't that appealing this is something I want to change um, oops hold on wrong layer because if I apply what I've just said to to this line here um, it's almost the same size uh, of chunks it's like the same length chunks all the way along so something better would be something like this And it may even be worth 
um, doing this and then reapplying it to the face and seeing if you can fit it in. So in this case, it's it's competing with the fact that his face is a real face. But um, if I was to apply it anyway, I think on an abstract level, it's still going to look quite appealing. Yeah. So now we look at this and we go, is this all hair? Like, that's a lot of hair to have on a face. That's a bit weird. But otherwise, I think it's a very nice um, way to draw the eye from here up to the top. Because we've got like a, um, a gradient to move down going from large shapes down to small shapes. And I think this is a good way of getting the eye to move from one place to another. So to me, that really does look more appealing. Um, but when you're doing a face that exists, um, and all faces exist to some extent because we're so familiar with them, you've got to make sure you balance uh, this out. Yeah, the Iron Man suit shape, that has a lot of that sort of... Um, shape variation and these sort of relationships like I'm trying to remember exactly what the Iron Man face looks like but it's like this roughly isn't it oh, crumbs I really can't remember oh does he have like a <laughs> he looks a bit unhappy doesn't he I'm not sure. Anyway, um, yeah, so that would be a solution. And I think when you're designing something like a helmet, um, that's where you can do this because it doesn't matter. Like, if this whole chunk was was part of a helmet um, that's like sitting on his chin or something, then this could be an interesting cut line to have go down the helmet. You can justify each of these areas with like little um, little gubbins, bits and bobs, which look like they have some functionality. Um, and yeah, if I just fill this in roughly, then like that would be a, an interesting way to try and get nice shapes into a helmet design. Um, because a helmet can be pretty much anything. There's far fewer restrictions on what shapes you can and can't have in a helmet. Um, yeah, in this case, I think the main uh, the main detractor was that little spike coming up there. So I'm getting rid of it. And a lot of the time, uh, the simpler the better. If you make a decision to go simpler, then that's often going to be the, the best approach. Um, and here, I think instead of actually making this a proper shape, I might just hint at a um, hint at this being where his hair is kind of growing down from, with some almost texture detail. So the shape reads still as a big block like this, um, and you get a little more information if you look closely, where you've got like a broken edge, but it's not interrupting too much. Um, so yeah, then lastly, it's just the back of the head, sharpen out that hair. Um, I think you could still have some loose hair. Uh, it could kind of like come off the body and then flick in to preserve this hard edge. Um, now it's like a question of, yeah, hair is always going to have a curve to it. Um, so how much curve do you want to keep in to these shapes? Um, what I've done here is this little like bun at the back. Each side is slightly curved because that communicates the material of hair, but to make it feel spikier to compensate, I've gone for a, um, a reverse curve versus a um, an outward curve, and this makes the edges really pointy. Um, so it's like balance the elements that will create the perception of a material or an object, and if you have to remove one of them, then try and emphasize another. Um, and then here, because this 
shoots out from his head a little bit, I'm going to really emphasize that little bulge and make it like a really crisp line. Ah, and here I've just done something which I don't like. I don't like the fact that these are the same length. This just feels imbalanced to me. I don't like it. Um, it's not appealing. So instead, I think it's better to go uh, small, medium, large around the back of his head. So if I had to stylize it into flat lines, that's that's what I'd do. Um, the other nice thing with uh, flat lines is imagine how a perspective grid works. Um, and technically, he his face here is in a perspective uh, grid of some sorts. It's going to be a fairly loose one like this. It's not too extreme. Actually, this is that's already more extreme than it actually is. But um, the thing that really sells perspective is when you have converging lines, and um, even on two D planes, like and in ab abstract forms, you can use converging lines to point the eye in a certain direction. Um, so that's the nice thing about the nose, is the nose is always going to point up back towards the eye. Um, but on the back of the head, because the head is further away, um, in perspective it would go from um, like wide lines out here, these would get thinner and thinner, uh, shorter and shorter as they go back across the head. Not as much as I've shown it here, but by just de designing the shapes that are in 2D space to match an exaggerated version of the perspective, then you can give like this really nice flow leading to the back of the head that sort of emphasizes the perspective um, without actually breaking it. Because ultimately the things that need to read properly in perspective here are the shape of the facial features and the ear and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, so there we go. That's my sharp guy versus um, soft, trustworthy guy. And um, like, to be honest, there's not, in terms of mood, I wouldn't say there's too much difference between them because so much is so similar about them. But there's certainly a bit of difference and um, it's worth bearing that in mind whenever you're using one design language, uh, one shape language versus another, that it's gonna communicate how um, the emotions of whatever you're creating is perceived. Um, there we go. Thanks for the TED talk. I guess that was quite long, wasn't it? <laughs> but worth covering. Uh, maybe I'll just take a big old clip of this. I hope I was recording it. It'll be on the VOD if not. Um, it is. It is recording. Excellent. Well, I can just, I might just crop that. I'll listen to it back. Maybe it made no sense. I was rambling far too much, but um, it's at least a good start to start formulating a proper way of explaining all of these things. Um, I can probably just clip it and put it on YouTube though. So That'll be nice. Um, if you want, I can do another one. I can push this this head all the way to like totally soft and rounded if you want to see that um, maybe even if you don't want to see that because I'm kind of <laughs> intrigued to know what it would look like um, I'll, do just, I'll do just a little bit I'm not sure there's actually much you can do to this face without um, really making it look um, unrealistic, but essentially to make something look soft, um, you end up using many more circles because if you imagine um, a balloon, when you fill it up, uh, it becomes a circle because it's the most efficient way to uh, fill an area with volume. Um, and so most soft things, basically anything that has a squishy interior, um, they will change the shape of themselves to be more efficient, um, have less surface area and more volume. So flesh on your body, for example, it's always going to um, sort of contour into rounded shapes whenever there's a large amount of um, non-fixed volume inside. So 
Muscle, for example, when it's not tensed, it's rounded and squishy. Um, as such, when you apply soft, or when you're trying to make her face look soft, um, any area that can have like a, um, a curve that's closer to the proportions of a circle, um, that's where you want to put it in. Because um, this nose, for example, this is a nose that would never exist in a balloon. Um, it can't because um, what a balloon, like if it has equal pressure on the inside, the balloon wants to push out uh, in all directions. And so the result is that the nose will become like this. It will bulge out at the top. This end will cut off and then underneath um, the nostril kind of like warp around to the side. Um, that's what a balloon would want to do. Um, and obviously that, that doesn't really work um, because we're not going to read that as a nose so much so easily anymore. And of course faces aren't balloons. But the point is, I've put curves in here, but they're curves that aren't being um, uh, being formed by the result of a large volume of squishy stuff bound by um, a surface. So um, to make him look a bit softer, um, I'm making this the tip of his nose where there's a, a curve going across it, um, making it look like the sort of equal pressure in all directions. So the curve is even. It doesn't accelerate from a really sharp turn to a much more shallow turn and back again. Instead, it's the same um, angle of turn all the way around. Um, so another place that I would put that in is um, on this part of his nostril, because it had quite a sharp turn at the bottom. It was rounded, but it was still quite sharp. So you can see the comparison now. He's got a rounded but um, angular nose here, and then over there, it's like it's a little bubble, a little balloon that's been inflated. It looks soft, it looks like you can boop it. And I'll put a little highlight on it to make it look even softer. But then yeah, this bone in the middle, this is now fine. Like, I wouldn't want to do anything to it um, because that's that's more changing the design of his, his character rather than the shape design layered on top. But when you come up to the eyebrows, this is where um, even in this, I actually have quite a sharp angle here, and I'm just going to totally remove that. So have the, the eyebrows end with a with a circle instead. And on this side too, just avoid having it get so thin. Um, generally, really thin shapes balance themselves out. Like imagine a really really thin balloon, um, a little sausage balloon. Like the air isn't going to distribute itself evenly along it. Um, instead, you're probably going to get something that sort of bulges in the middle and maybe little blobs at the end. Like remember when you um, actually blow up one of those long balloons, um, you get to a point where you've got stretched out balloon and then like the little wibbly bit at the end. Um, because the air wants to do its best to like fill an area and until you've actually stretched this part balloon and made it soft enough to, to stretch, it just ignores it. The air fills up one side and not the other. Uh, my music stopped. So I sort of take the same approach for something like the eyebrow. Here I had the eyebrow go really thin because it's aesthetic, I think it looks cool. It means you have a nice width variation across. Um, but with this one we want it to feel much more soft and stable. So it's still got a bit of that width variation, but it's all a lot rounded, more rounded, a lot um, more constant in width. This little shadow can just become more rounded. Um, and then yeah, his forehead, don't think there's much need to change it. Um, like here I had it go, come down and be quite a sharp sort of triangular form here, even though it was rounded off. Um, I could bulge that a little, little bit more because you have a bit of flesh in your eyebrow. Um, so I think that's allowed. Up here I can just, just round it off. Um, the ear, make it into a big swoop instead of having any sense that there's a negative curve as part of the ear. Just make the entire thing one continuous curve around the outside. Like imagine you're redrawing all of this with the spline tool, the pen tool with um, like the soft curves enabled. Um, 
the stuff here, just slightly more consistent curve instead of being straight and then shifting into one. Um, I think this was originally just a, a really heavy line at the back of his head, but if it's hair, then yeah, we'll just make it a bit thicker and show that it's curving in instead of uh, lying flat. Um, same thing I did with the eyebrows with uh, moustache, like it's just making it slightly thicker throughout and then curving uh, rounding off the edge. Here I may be tempted to, for the purpose of the sketch, like show his bottom lip, lose that lost edge, <laughs> lose the lost edge, bring back the edge that was once lost um, for the purpose of showing that this lip is rounded because otherwise the lip could be like a really sharp edge like, like that. Um, but instead we want it to be a nice round, round thing. And because we've now brought that edge back, there's no need to show this little like runway coming back into the face. So the um, the hair coming out from the knee can be another cute little bulge like this. And then same size, uh, same shape bulge, but just larger. So we're getting that small, big um, shape relationship underneath. Um, and then let's just chop off that chin like that. Oh, look at him. He's so soft. You just want to rub your cheeks on him. Um, because we were talking about appeal and shapes being the same size, something which isn't so good about this mouth area is that he's got the same size curve almost three times in a row. Um, I'm not really sure what I'd do with this. It, it doesn't look too wrong because we understand what these elements are so much. Again, the fact that this is a real human face interferes too much. We understand the object and we know that it's real. Um, so a lot of what you would normally do to make an abstract shape appealing can be ignored. So I think I, I think for just, just to demonstrate that point, I'm going to leave it in. But then here, yeah, um, now this whole shape coming around to the chin is a nice one nice long curve. It doesn't look unrealistic because it's really not pushing um, too far away from realism, but totally fits the, uh, the style we're going for now. Um, no little stabby bits coming off, um, nothing that's sharp. And in fact, by doing this, now we have one really long curve. It almost looks like a gooseneck. Like I can turn this into a swan. Wow, so elegant, so beautiful. So here's the real tip, guys. You should be putting birds into your work because birds are elegant. Um, they're gentle creatures. You know, have you ever patted a swan on the head? It'll, it'll rub up against your hand and, and kiss your hand, you know? Swans are lovely. Um, oh, absolutely, so my genuinely like a really good tip for for buns on, on hair is you get a, an image of a, a robin like a little garden wren or a robin or something or a blue tip and you just you just plop it in you know with this little beak and everything maybe a cute little tail you just plop it in and if it has an eye that's fine you know he's he's got a bead in his hair or something um, and there we go now he's a hundred percent cuter um and he's saving the planet at the same time. Like, what's not to love? So yeah, then the back of his head, nice and curved. Um, the last thing I need to pay attention to is the eye. Um, the main thing I do here, and the problem here is if I change too much, I'm gonna change his expression, which isn't what change the expression even more, which isn't the point. The point is to try and restylize without affecting the mood and the character. But I need to break off some of that sharp edge here because the angle of the eye naturally causes a sharp triangle to form. And I want to get rid of those as much as possible. So instead, um, I'll put something in, either raise the the curve of the upper eyelid slightly so it can bend down into the end and the same with the lower one um, or just make it clear when 
this ends. And you can use that little squishy pink bit at the edge of the eye to act as the cap. And just make that slightly larger than it needs to be, or than it would realistically be. Um, and I'll make him a little softer, and I think I've really changed his eye quite a bit. I've kind of messed it up. He was looking down more, wasn't he? I don't know, smash it. It was a mess. But yeah, letting this um, light shape bulge out a little more than it would realistically. That's going to make him look a little softer. And yeah, with all of this, like, because I'm not really shading, I'm, I'm more focusing on line work. Um, I'm not doing too much of this, but literally just softening that, uh, that ramp of dark to light is going to help a lot. Um, same here. It's like I have this nice curve in here already. There's nothing really needs to change about that. Um, it's a good way of giving him this sharp look because again, we we see this shape and we're like, oh, he must have pretty sharp cheekbones. But um, they still fit the shape language. Um, when he's rendered into a 2D scene on the page, um, it still fits. So we're good. But like the, the example to make it softer, if you were thinking in 3D shape, would just be to give him a slightly lower uh, jawbone, like this. This is going to make his his face softer um, from all angles, because um, like my little discussion about the balloon. Um, otherwise, this is just a very it would be a very thin shape to exist uh, amongst the larger masses of his face. So I'm going to try and put in the intensity of the shadow again around his eye because that was affecting the mood of it quite a lot. But he's super soft. He's the super soft version of this guy. Um, and essentially, yeah, that's that's it. My my current preference and style is in between these two um, because it lets you do both. And if I want to make this guy look more evil, then I can just pinch him, pinch his shapes a little bit. Um, I can, whilst keeping the sharp, uh, whilst keeping the sort of very subtle curves, I can pinch his nose out even more. Um, and I can make his eyes uh, spikier and then do the same thing to his beard. Maybe add a couple extra shapes into his beard so he can have a few more pointy bits poking out. And now he's starting to look a lot more evil. Um, but it still fits within the same shape language. And I think that's what I find restricting about um, art styles, which like rely on uh, hard edges so much. Or, um, or the opposite, where everything's so rounded, is that it's hard to show both extremes of design within it. And if I had to argue for the case of why this is uh, the best way to go, it's because uh, if you look at any photo or anything from real life, essentially uh, perfectly sharp edges don't exist in the real world. It just you don't get them. Um, the closest you get are knife edges, and uh, <laughs> to be really like semantic, if you look at those close enough, then even those aren't a perfectly sharp edge because atoms are round. Wow, really hitting you with the logic now. Um, but the point is. Look at your hand, and there's very few parts that, even to our eye, at our human scale, look sharp. Like the tips of our nails are the only bit. Everything else on the hand um, has some sort of curve to it. Like if you look at the creases running across your hand, um, or even like the, the gap between your thumb and your finger, um, mess around with that, and you can get a fairly straight looking line. Like right now, I'm going to draw up my thumb because um, we've got this and what I'm doing at the moment is just displaying my hand apart um, and here's my finger up here with my nail and then my other fingers blah 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 um, and looking at this bit in here I'm almost getting some pretty nice sharp straight lines but they're not quite there's still little bulges to them side to side 
And I don't think that detracts from um, their sharpness. I think you can still make this look sharp and severe um, and respect the, the realism that there are actually sharp lines there. So there are actually curves everywhere. Um, and ultimately I find that for putting things into perspective, it's the best way to capture all the detail necessary. Um, so if I just finish that off. So yeah, that's my thumb at the moment as I see it. Um, and a bunch of stuff in here. Big meaty chunks. Um, essentially, yeah, everything's slightly curved. And I'm already applying my style to this image. Like this is stylized in the same way that I've done this, where I've got um, any area that I want to feel sharp, I've just kind of gone for lines accelerating through them. So um, this bit here is a good example. It's a smooth curve coming around the top and then there's a quick acceleration in the rate at which it turns the corner and then a fairly quick acceleration back again. Um, and in this case, this is, uh, this is a really good way of demonstrating what's happening in perspective, because if you imagine this series of, of curves, um, what perspective, well, I can do it in Photoshop, then you get this, um, smooth curve going into a very, very quick curve, very, very quick curve, smooth curve, quick curve. And so what I'm showing is essentially a a wrap, a wrap around the volume of my thumb here, and they're going to be a smoother curve on the top. And then on the side where it becomes an outline, a very quick um, back and forth. And if I really wanted to like, you know, really uh, emphasize the perspective of my thumb, I could do this kind of thing. Um, it doesn't look right. It's not based on any anatomy, but it kind of communicates the idea that there's space being shortened uh, between here. So. Um, yeah, stuff to think about. But when you come to refining any anything, painting or drawing, uh, to make it realistic at least, nothing's gonna be nothing's gonna look like this ever. It, it just can't, in my opinion. Um, and then over here, um, this could exist. Probably, it's just, it's unlikely to be as balanced and as rounded as this. But he could be, he's, to me, far more realistic than this guy. And I'd really have to push and change the proportions of his entire face, not just the stylization, uh, to make him rounded to a point that I don't think is realistic. Uh, also, I'm getting some serious... All right, it's making into a bubble. That's what we're gonna do. We're about to turn this guy into a bubble. Uh, so, because liquify doesn't show up uh, being a separate window, what I'm gonna do is kind of like warp each chunk piece by piece. But, yeah, to make him more bubbly, the first stop is going to make his eye big and round. Um, because essentially, the more rounded and stylized you go, the, the fewer properly small shapes you're going to have. So you just got to get rid of them. Just got to make them more big. The tip of his nose is going to inflate. Like so. Like I want to make it still look appealing and not ridiculous, so I'm going to be careful with how I inflate his nose because I could just make him look kind of like a little goblin troll monster thing. Um, and I still want to make him look kind of serious, so you can see here his eyes gotten bigger and so is his eyebrow, so the space in between is kind of being lost, but that's fine. That's, that's part of the stylization, I think. Um, what I'll do on the forehead is kind of lose this secondary form. Um, because now this almost feels like an unnecessary detail and um, his head would now just sort of bulge out like this. I still need to be careful not to bulge it completely because a round forehead is very much feminine. Um, 
But if I show that this this curve here is bulging out and then his eyebrow is the thing that kind of breaks that up. And I think that's a nice workaround. Um, and then yeah, other stuff is really just making his features bigger. Let's make his ears round. Wider and shorter than they actually are. Um, and then his whole chin here. I don't know if this will just make him look worse or not, but I, know, I guess firstly I need to do the same to his mouth. But then his whole chin here could just be bent around and hopefully this won't make him just look kind of like rounded and chubby. Um, but getting a more, like the overarching curve here is now much bigger. So we're getting closer and closer to this whole thing being um, an actual circle. Essentially. Yep, he's a cartoon now. <laughs> Basically. Um, and that's it. That's, that's essentially what I was saying with the... To take the stylization even further, what you have to do is start breaking realism and yeah, in this case, by going more rounded, he's going to look more cartoony. Um, now that I'm fully invested in this topic, what I'm going to do is go to the other side and give the sharp man the same treatment um, and make him even sharper and see how, I'm, how much we can push that. Because to me, all of these things are... I'm trying to put in place the general lessons that I was teaching early on, which is just about... Um, big, medium, small, and uh, the contrasts within contrasts. And by applying that to all of these, I think we can... They're not going to look realistic, but they will still hopefully all look very appealing. And I just want them to feel appealing still. So, yeah, what I've done here to his forehead is, again, just emphasize that it's getting closer to a full round, a fully circular, circular line. Yeah, on this side, let's see, what would we do to him? He's going to become real edgy. You're going to say the same, you're curious now. Oh yeah, so that's it, let's, uh, let's take this guy. So his nose is, has already got this nice thin point to it and it kind of accelerates down towards the bottom or maybe accelerates towards the top again. I like using warp to do this kind of thing a lot because um, it lets you like uh, add this sort of acceleration where you've got the width constantly expanding as you go down uh, very easily and very consistently. So now we've got this real sense that it's thin and gets wide and that gives us a load of motion coming down, which is very nice. Um, I think this whole component of the eye, this is kind of experimental, I'm not sure if this will work, but having it all thinner and crushed down could be very cool. The reason I'm not sure it will work too well is because I rely on this whole area as being a large chunk. Um, it needs to be, it needs to have enough weight. So otherwise it's going to be like, where did that part of his face go? So I think to compensate, what I'll do is I'll just make the shadow underneath larger. But his eye itself can essentially can become more closed. Um, and I can just slice that off like that. Um, the mouth, I think we want to do a similar thing where we just kind of add this sharp angle to it. Um, so what I did there, I've made the whole thing thinner um, so that everything's sharper essentially, but then I want it to still take up the same rough amount of space from high to low. So I just gave it a, a slant and this slant actually helps with the perspective of the face. Um, Cause at the moment our horizon line on the face is basically in the middle. All the lines underneath, they are starting to point up like that. And all the lines above um, are pointing down like this. And that's essentially the perspective that we're building this face in. So anything that uh, I can do to emphasize that is, is, is great.
because it's just going to make him look um, more extreme. So yeah, here I'm going to make this whole bit in the same way that in the uh, soft face I made this into one big curve, like one big, um, very close to being um, circular curve. Here I'm going to combine the whole thing and go for this really aggressive um, reverse curve. Um, the ear already pointed down towards the earlobe a lot, so I'm just going to emphasize that. Um, it might become kind of elf-like, but that's okay. That's just the sacrifice we have to make. Um, and yeah, his eyebrow, I think, this whole thing. A cool way to stylize this would just be to cut off the top completely and make it a complete straight line there. Because even here, we've got this slight kink up and down like that. Um, with both the with both sides of this, here we're simplifying to straighter lines, like uh, single straight lines, and over there we're simplifying to single um, circular curves. So all of these bits, if I can straighten them out, I think I will. So yeah, I think this is something which I could do that to quite successfully. Or maybe not, maybe it still needs this. But in which case, either I want there to be a really big, long shape here, con contrasting with uh, medium and small here, or I want to do the opposite, where I have this come up from the bottom. Um, and now you can see that this is these are two equally side, uh, equally length edges, and that's, that's not as appealing. So I now need to crop one of them to make it appealing again. So in this case, I've chosen to do that. So uh, a short line here, which actually lines up nicely with the temple. So something good to keep in mind when you're doing these sort of shapes is that if you know that there's a a shape here, like the temple, which is kind of this this little chunk, then another detail of roughly the same size can help indicate that it's there. In this case, what I've done is um, I've just got like a little chunk of shadow. Um, over here, it's just soft, soft, um, soft shadows. But yeah, you can also get a sense. I mean, this is something which I can probably change and, and fight around to try and make the um, the personality read is the same across all of them. But what I'm currently seeing is this guy looks very much more serious, and this guy looks um, more sincere, which uh, I think fits the general feeling of this um, sort of exercise, because as we go sharper, we're becoming more villainous. As we get rounder, we become more like a hero. Um, so this is our friendly, trustworthy hero. And uh, Inao, like, he's got like this sincere uh, drive, in a sense. He looks like he's going to go beat up the bad guys. Um, and over here, he looks like he is the bad guy. Um, which is kind of like a natural way for the expressions to move. Um, and yeah, in the middle, we just have a neutral guy. Like he's just a, he's just a dude. He looks sort of serious, or maybe he just looks like he's pondering something, but he's very much in the middle of both of them. Um, anyway, so um, a nice thing to do is I've got this curve coming off the bottom of the ear. If I just continue that round into the back of the hair, that's cool. And then I can just have this come up. Um, this is actually an interesting place. This would have to be like a really deliberate choice to um, to do this because what if, when you have a cross in an image, um, it's essentially having multiple lines converge in one place. And in general, this is never a an appealing thing to do. You want to avoid having um, multiple lines converge in a single space. If I had to give a reason to it, it might be that um, your eye doesn't know which way to go, like it's got too many choices. Um, so it doesn't sort of aid the flow of the eye around the image. Um, but yeah, that's why you might hear people talk about T, T sections or T junctions a lot of the time, because what you should do instead is try and do this kind of thing where you offset the joins rather than, um, having them all join like this, because this is more appealing, feels more design, feels more natural. Um, uh, even though sometimes uh, in, in real photography you'll find that stuff do, uh, does line up and it can be quite confusing. Like any of those images where 
it looks like something else is happening when um, just just people like holding up the Leaning Tower of Pisa, for example. That's just because um, they've got their little hands, like they're doing this, um, and they've lined it up perfectly so that you've got these edges joining, which makes a relationship between the two. And if you do it well, the perception is that um, they're actually touching. Um, so the same thing here, like by doing this, it implies that the back of his ear actually touches his hair. And I want it to look like he's, these are two separate objects. Um, however, in this heavy stylization, this could also be just like a, like a statement in a sense. Um, it's very hard to say whether it looks good or bad. It's interesting and it looks very deliberate. Um, a more subtle way would be to have some sort of gap in the middle. So say this thing came through here first. Now you've taken out all of the tangents, but you've still got a continuous line that runs through like that. And that's, that's cool. That's like a nice way of um, benefiting from the stylization, but fixing the problem. Um, anyway, let's just sharpen out this stuff. And uh, he will be almost done, I think. Sharp boy. Yeah, let's like really emphasize how his hair comes straight out of his head. And I think maybe we can remove this double joint on the top of his head completely. And again, just go for one single strong line going across the top. Um, actually, seeing as this is already two levels sharp, we can add a slight reverse curve here and, and just make it even more severe. And uh, what I'm going to do with my shading is just um, allow this line, where it's like the start of his hair, to continue through to the back um, by carving out a shape here uh, where the top of the shape matches and continues this line. And maybe like another place I could do that is have the tip of this shape end where you'd expect this line to continue to. So if I bend this line up slightly, now you kind of you can see that that might curve all the way through. If I just do something here that kind of breaks that line, but then allows it to re, uh, come back in, then again we kind of get some more fun. Um, relationships in the 2D space that just, yeah, give you something to sort of latch on and uh, find interesting when exploring the image. Another good example of this would be uh, you know, if you have a complex uh, form like this, having them all terminate at the same time um, along the same line. Like that's very nice. It's a very nice way of doing it. And you can see this actually gives us a nice big, medium, small shape at the back. Um, big, medium, and small. So, um, yeah, there's Spiky Dude. If everyone has uh, suggestions, we should name every character. Um, each version of the character, so he's got to have a real edgy name on this side, um, and then he needs to have like a really soft or heroic name on the other. But um, essentially what I did at the bottom here, taking, working within the same style and using its constraints to make a character look more evil or more heroic, it's interesting to then see how difficult it is to do that um, once you've gone so extreme with a style. So like making this guy look heroic now, this is going to be tough. Um, whilst keeping all these sharp angles. So a big thing is that he needs to look friendly, so he can't have this um, expression anymore. And that's that's the main thing. Like we now have to change expressions completely. Um,
otherwise I don't think there's there's really any way to do it. Um, we can't have such a severe design and design language at the same time, otherwise we're never going to get the heroic look we want. Let's have him looking forward still, so he kind of matches the others. God, he looks very awake. See, even here, like, my temptation is to make this eyebrow nice and, like, rounded. But I have to keep it sharp and then somehow communicate the kind of, like, soft, excited eye eyebrow raise expression that I'm trying to go for. And then make his eye thin and sharp without losing, without making him look sly and cunning. I think that does a decent job, and it's it's expression more than anything, but you can see how I've made the eyebrow thicker. It's no longer as long and thin. That just wouldn't fly anymore. Um, and I think here I would remove the really sharp um, aspects from the top and the bottom, and instead have these lines um, point back into the face rather than point out in a way. So, you know, this is like literally pointing down, it's depressive, this is pointing up, it's uplifting. Hanzo. <laughs> that sounds like a good name. The far left is Keanu Stark. <laughs> uh, wait, far left before or after I flipped? Presumably when it was like this. Keanu Stark. And who was Hanzo? I think this is Hanzo. Just sounds like such a good name. Looks like a very sneaky way to create an original character. <laughs> sort of. He's not the hero we deserve, but the one we need. Hey, hey, Sanguin, what's up? Thank you for joining. Uh, <laughs> clearly hasn't played Overwatch. I did not know there was a character called Hanzo in Overwatch. Um, you are correct, I have not. Um, yeah, I like this though. This is um, more successful than I thought it would be. Let's raise his eye up. Slightly. Let's try and do the opposite. Let's try and um, make the, the good round boy over here an evil round boy. I think this is going to be far more challenging um, because so much of it is how like all of the shapes compared to this one are just getting closer and closer to like this big big circle, and we need to try and break that without breaking it. <laughs> Hanzo, no, Robatson, <laughs> second from the right. Yeah. Uh, Overwatch guide. Let's have a quick look. Um, let's put them all up so that they're still visible. Let's have a look at this Overwatch guide. Oh, that dude! I did not know he was called Hanzo, but yeah, I'm basically drawing this dude at the moment. I just haven't given him the fringe. Um, bam. He looked badass. Hanso. Oh yeah, Hanso, because he's not round. I love that. Uh, let's let's do that. He's called Hanso. And then he's got a little brackets me afterwards. Because <laughs> it's because he's handsome. He's a bit full of himself. Oh, that's a good one, right? It's a that's that's not a good one. I'm sorry. Um, it's really irksing, uh, irking, bothering me. It's irksome. And it's bothering me that he doesn't have shadow under his chin, so let's change that. Okay, let's make this boy evil. Um, so what I'd normally do to make someone like this evil is, yeah, change his expression definitely, make it look kind of maniacal, or scheming, sly, that kind of thing. Um, what's the story behind the blue dude who walks across the screen? Um, 
they're just a cute little dude. They're like the only animation I've ever made. And it's cute. I like it. That's about it. So what can we do? The expression needs to be really less determined. So I think we can go for like a downward sweep. So it's kind of more, looks a little more smug. Um, so confident rather than determined. Um, part of having the eyebrow raised really helps with that. So this, this kind of implies, even though I can't really show what the other eyebrow is doing, that one side of the eyebrow is raised and one side's not. Um, and I think that's a really good way of, of showing confidence and like the sort of arrogance, the cocky arrogance of a, of a villain. And then we can we can close off his eye whilst keeping the softness. Um, yeah, so what I'm doing here now, like actually this kind of works, is rotating his eye down. So that gives us the feeling of like a sharp angle down, but we can still keep the sort of rounded sausage shape of his eye. Um, although at the moment he still does look mostly like an angrier hand, so. So we've got to go further. Um, we can kind of hook his nose down. Like he doesn't need to be as handsome anymore. He can look quite, he can become ugly villain. So if we give him like a more hook nose kind of thing, that might not work too badly. He could have like a fairly high bridge or something. Hmm, not sure, but he definitely needs to have a grin. Yeah, and if I make his chin like a lot larger, so from his lips down, um, that part of his chin, that's an area that um, will make him look kind of more like an angry buff dude that's gonna gonna mess you up. Um, but it can still be quite rounded. Yeah, so I think the um, I think having the eyebrow flick up as well as push down gives it a really kind of arrogant feel, um, and that's that's the selling point I think this time combined with that grin um, that's making him look more evil. And like if I emphasize the, the pinching of his cheek and stuff, it still needs to be very rounded and soft because. He's round boy. Um, this will make it look kind of, he's like, you've got this snarl almost. There's something kind of Japanese mask about this, and I think it might be the big nose, but um, yeah. Just make the shadow blur the eye even darker. He'll look like a druggie. Ah, now that's a very good point. Definitely have more shadow because this is, shouldn't affect the uh, shape design at all. I'm wondering how round we can get the eye and make it look, still look right. Um, that's not awful. But in many ways, we can't do much to the rest of the face. Like the ear could be a bit smaller. I don't face Smash, unfortunately, no, sorry. He's the traitor kind, mass murder confirmed. <laughs> Ganondorf vibes. Yeah, I'm thinking of Ganondorf, I think. Um, yeah, I haven't played any myself, but I'm, I'm familiar with a lot of characters. Or at least the character's representation in Smash. It's a bit dumb being like, yeah, I know some of the characters from Smash. Well, yeah, of course I do. Um, well, there we go. He definitely looks like the villain and he looks like the hero. So it's possible. It's just very difficult. Um, and trying to be 
so uh, adhere to a style so closely it makes it very difficult. Um, and like some of the most difficult aspects of designing anything is trying to keep consistency in your design style amongst um, amongst anything that you've designed for a, a particular project. Because this is where you have to really think about how to represent um, something totally different. So hero versus villain, but in the same style. And if you're going for this kind of cutesy look overall, then <laughs> it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard to make a convincing villain. But of course, like if you're making a cutesy look like this, it's probably because you're you don't want the villain to look that intimidating. Let's give him a real big jaw as well. Because this is fun. Like the big jaw means we can actually go even closer to the the fully circular design. But because it's on a dude, you get the impression that it's like big and muscular and chunky, like he's gonna beat you up more. So that's perfect. The other thing that I did, um, at least compared to the real the real face, is um, here I've poked his chin in slightly because now we're getting closer to an overall bulge, like rounded shape here. And it gives him like a nice plucky underdog feel. Um, I've done the opposite here. Um, and I think it's sort of balanced by the fact that his beard is now so rounded. Um, but he has, he has an overbite, underbite, overbite? I can't remember. Either way, his jaw is poking out forward. Um, instead, it's the opposite, which is a nice, like, you know, obviously when you're designing a hero and a villain, you would do your best to actually make them look distinct. But at the moment, because we're doing a bizarre exercise of making them look as close as similar uh, as possible, um, that's a nice thing to have, like, as a, as a difference between them. Big jaw, small jaw. Um, yeah, that's sort of back and forth. And yeah, I, I did something to his earlobe, which I need to do to this guy's ear as well. The top is way too thick. Um, like the detail resolution is too high. So I want to turn that down and make him softer and more rounded. But another thing that you could do, like if they both had to have a bun, but the bun could be anywhere, then like this bun could be lower and more humble. And then this bun could be higher and more like he's making himself look like a crown or something. Um, or look like he has a crown or something. Um, again, sort of feeding into this sense that he's arrogant or, or whatever. Prideful. So he has the same element the same shape and size but in this one it sort of communicates a different a different message anyway uh, thanks for joining night night